Tower Defense Simulator is a game packed full of features. There are 7 different game modes, 40 plus unique towers, and much more. However, there are some things that I think are missing that would overall improve the TDS experience. In this video, I'm going to be going over 8 features that I think should be added to TDS. This includes game modes, quality of life changes, and more. Starting off, for number 1, give Polluted Wastelands 2 a better reward. Despite being the hardest out of the 3 special game modes, it is the only one that doesn't have a special reward. Beating Badlands gives you the Cowboy, beating Pizza Party gives you the Warden, but for Polluted Wastelands, all you get is a couple of coins. I think if you get a tower for beating this mode, it will be a lot more exciting and more people will want to play it. Something like the Toxic Gunner would be a great fit, which is an event tower that had a very fitting vibe for this game mode. The reward could also be a tower skin, and a good concept for that is Lux Nuclear Accelerator, which looks epic and has a design based on the final boss. A tower skin would not only feel a lot more rewarding than coins, it would be a cool way to flex that you've beaten one of the hardest game modes in TDS. In this current state, there really isn't any point in playing this game mode. It's not the best method of gaining coins, nor does it give you anything special, it's just a fun challenge. I think that's a shame, because I really love playing this game mode, and there's been so much effort and love put into it. Number 2, Sandbox Mode. In Sandbox Mode, you would have unlimited cash, the ability to skip to any wave, pausing, and the ability to summon any enemy with a click of a button. You would still be limited to the towers you have unlocked, however, you should be able to use any tower from your inventory, not just a loadout of 5. This feature would be fantastic and especially make getting footage much easier. Playing through an entire game of follow mode usually takes around 20 minutes. If you just want to test a little thing, then you shouldn't have to go through that entire process. One of the biggest potential issues people address about a sandbox mode is that people would have no reason to play the actual game and would simply just mess around in a sandbox mode. I don't think this is accurate as a sandbox mode would only allow you to use the towers you have unlocked. You'd still have to grind in the actual game to unlock expensive towers such as the golden skins or the hardcore towers so it wouldn't hurt that aspect of the game. All this feature would do is make testing strategies a lot quicker, getting footage a lot faster, and give board players something fun to do while they wait for the yearly updates. I mean look at BTD6, it's one of the most popular tower defense games in the market, yet it offers a sandbox mode for every single map. Number 3, Skin Randomizer. This isn't a huge feature, but it's something I personally think is enjoyable. There's a lot of skins in the game, and I usually just end up using the same skin every game. If there was a way to randomize what skin your tower has equipped, I think it'd be a fun way to get to enjoy all the skins you have, and just give you some extra variety with each game. Speaking of a skin randomizer, there should also be something similar for choosing maps. Whenever I play a squad game with randoms, we always end up playing the easiest maps, making each game play relatively the same. That is so boring, and if there was a way to select a random map, it would make things much more exciting, and overall spice things up a bit. You wouldn't know what to expect and could either get the easiest map or the hardest map. This will stop every game from being identical and make grinding a lot less boring. Number 4, matches should not start before all players have loaded in. This is such an obvious feature that for some reason doesn't exist. If you have terrible internet, you'll often load in after a couple ways have already passed. This makes doing strategies that require intense farming an absolutely miserable experience. If I got a nickel for every time I've had to restart a game because someone hasn't loaded in, I wouldn't even have to make videos anymore. Now, from a coding perspective, I got no doubt that the developers have already attempted to fix this and it's probably much more complicated than I think. However, I think this should be a priority as I know a lot of people struggle with this. So, uh, please fix it. Number 4, Bring Back PvP I know it wouldn't be balanced, but I don't see any harm in having a purely casual PvP game mode. This was previously a feature, but for whatever reason, it was removed. I hate when games do this. It's never a good idea to flat out just remove content. Even if it sucks and the meta is boring, it's better than nothing. I'm pretty certain the devs are planning to add this back in the future, but like, come on, just give it back now. There's so many things that could be done with PvP, like huge tournaments, YouTuber competitions, and more. There's not an awful lot to do when you've already gotten all the towers, so this could be a great way for the game to keep its player count up even when there's no updates. I mean, look at tower battles. It hasn't had an update in years, yet it still has a decent player count mainly due to its PvP game mode. Number 6, a tutorial for new players. Whenever I try to introduce this game to my friends, their first question is always, how do I even get in a game? When you first play TDS, it don't tell you nothing. It just puts you in a lobby and expects you to figure it out. Not only is this frustrating for new players, it causes people to quit before they even give the game a chance. I think the tutorial should just be a quick game where the commander shows you how to place a tower, what enemies are, and how to win. It should also show you how to get into a game, because the average new player isn't going to know that they have to walk all the way to the elevators or walk up to this random minigunner NPC and select the game mode. I genuinely have no idea why this hasn't been added yet. I mean, pretty much every other game has some kind of tutorial, so why doesn't TDS? However, if a tutorial does get added, please make it skippable. There ain't nothing worse than trying to play with a friend and having them to be forced to do a long drawn out tutorial. Number 7, Quests. I think a quest system will be very fitting with challenges varying in difficulty and giving players a new way to make coins. These quests could be things such as beating follow mode with a certain loadout, completing all 7 game modes, or even additional modifiers that you could apply, making your game much more difficult. Upon completing it, you will gain a couple of coins or maybe even a unique tower skin. 
I think this will add a huge amount of replayability and give completionists something else to grind for. Number 8. For my final suggestion, a game mode with more than 4 players. Whenever I want to play with my community, I'm limited to only being able to play with 3 other people. This kind of sucks, as I'd like to be able to play with as many people as possible. That's why I think they should add back something similar to Mega Servers, a previous game mode that allowed you to play with 8 people. Over, Mega Servers were pretty flawed, so there's a couple of things I would change. First of all, instead of having an abysmal placement limit for each player, the map would instead be much larger to compensate for the extra space needed. Also, enemies would be a lot stronger as otherwise the mode would be way too easy as you place like 300 accelerators. This seems like a much more enjoyable approach as just restricting placement limit makes the game pretty boring. You'd end up maxing out pretty quickly and it doesn't really feel like you're doing anything. Instead, making the enemies more difficult would justify the higher amount of towers you could place and make the game mode more unique. I think this would be a lot of fun and it'd be a great way to interact with a bunch of people. But with that said, that's all the features I could come up with. Maybe this video could serve as some kind of inspiration for the devs, but I doubt it. If you have any suggestions or improvements to my ideas, let me know in the comments down below. Before I end the video, I'd like to thank Zadouled, Adam, Leafhead23, Stay Hydrated, Mr. Padino, Maiden H, Sir Lag, Mr. Autistic Man, Mr. Giggles, Sniper Mask, Grow, Dad, Potted Sprout, Luis Alberto, Elixir US, Solox, Rookie, Duolingo is coming, Nimbus to Wicker, The Figure, and Jondro684 for supporting my content by becoming a channel member. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, like being my friend on Roblox, consider becoming a channel member today. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Head Mafia. My name is Corso and I'll see y'all in the next video.